Hello, everybody. Uh, I think just uh, to, to, to put the uh, spirit of TED here, I have to say that uh, what we're doing is quite awesome. And what I, uh, what I need to explain you uh, in a number of minutes now, why do I think so? And once again, uh, this is one of the most, most important topics I think I can talk about. And I think it should be open because I don't care if anybody else would implement ideas I'm talking about. I would be happy if somebody here or anywhere else uh, could do what uh, I want to say. So what I want to explain to you guys is that, in fact, it uh, doesn't matter what you have heard or haven't heard about that, but aging is a disease, and this disease can be cured. This is uh, somewhat strange, because the topic of aging is, I'd say, very well known. I think anybody knows about aging that it's inevitable. Nothing can be done about that. And uh, this subject is deeply buried in all kinds of mythology. Moreover, most of our mythology, in fact, deals with this subject. I'd like to quote here, for example, what some people in Catholic Church are saying, is that aging is something which occurs because of our inherent nature, and nothing can be, in fact, uh, prevented. Well, aside from mythology, aging is, in fact, a problem. Uh, aging causes lots of diseases and suffering, everybody knows. 65% of people age and die of aging. It costs billions. And what's, more impo what's most important, aging puts brakes on human development. We can do a lot of things which we could do if there were no aging. So if I say that aging can be cured, I need to say you what aging is and what aging is not. And this is a quite remarkable graph. I think, well, I'll, I'll be talking about in about 10 minutes, but I think there are two things, or maybe three things you want uh, to get uh, out of this. So this is one of the most important graphs you can see in medical sciences. This is a probability of a human being to die of age-related diseases depending on their age. So the vertical axis on this graph is logarithmic one, which means that the probability to die of age-related diseases in fact scales exponentially. So it grows in geometric progression with age. So you can see that there are many curves there and each curve corresponds to a specific disease, like diabetes or cancer or Alzheimer's disease or something else. And all these curves, all probabilities of death of age-related diseases, follow the same rate, which means that all, possibly all, age-related diseases should have a single cause. So there are many problems, but most probably there is a single cause behind them. Behind them. You can see, for example, there is one curve which is out of this graph. This is the probability to die of accident. And even this probability also grows after a certain age, and it grows with the same rate, which means that people die of age because of this process, but also people die from all kinds of age-related problems like infectious diseases, which are also prevalent in uh, high age. And uh, if we could cure aging, we could postpone, essentially make all these graphs horizontal. Well, this is a dream. Why do I think it's possible? In fact, and this uh, only recently became known, that there are animals, and in fact lots of animals, which essentially don't age, or they age in a profoundly different way. This is an example of the same curve for a Somalian naked mole, red. This is a very funny animal which lives uh, under the ground, and the probability to die from age-related diseases for this specific animal doesn't increase with age, which means that if I look at the mirror, or you look at the mirror, or you look at somebody else, you more or less understand the age of a human. But if you look at this specific animal after a certain age, you cannot tell how old this animal is. Well, if there were only a single animal like this, that could be fun, but not interesting. People didn't even care to learn how different animals age, because everyone thought that everyone ages in the same way as we do. So in 2000, 2006, there, were only one there was only one example of an animal aging like naked mole red. red. Nowadays, in, uh, age, uh, in, uh, in databases, there are more than 10 examples of animals from all kingdoms of life, like turtles, like fish, like uh, primitive subjects, like whales, for example, huge animals, huge mammals like whales can live up to 200 years 
and apparently don't age exactly in the same way as this uh, naked mole rate, red. This is, by the way, also a mammalian example. So how do these animals live for so long? I mean, what happens such that these guys can live long and we cannot? And the answer is apparently very simple. These guys have ridiculous level of stress resistance. I mean, if you try to kill a naked mole, it's very difficult. It can survive up to 10 times more radiation than we do. Their tissues can withstand ridiculous or awesome amount of uh, reactive oxygen species. And because of this, these animals don't develop age-related diseases in the way we know them. For example, uh, none of these animals uh, ever died of cancer in the lab. Well, if this is possible for naked mole rat, or if this is possible for a whale, it should be possible for humans. And that's our dream. And this dream is in fact supported by lots of experiments. Uh, the maximum lifespan of yeasts, which are actually mushrooms, not animals, uh, was increased 10 times. The lifespan of worms was increased 10 times. And lifespan of mice, which is more or less closely related to us uh, mammal, was increased almost 2.5 times. In fact, there is a huge price. If you teach a mice to live more than two times longer than a wild type, you can gather a few million dollars to do that. So there is a huge race. It's almost like a space race. There is a huge race among the scientific teams all over the world to increase lifespans of model animals. Because if we can do it with mice, and mice is a preclinical model of uh, any disease for any medicine we have, then we can possibly do it with humans. Well, in fact, longevity can evolve naturally. Naked mole rat was a mammal. It's of a rat size. They didn't live long, but somehow they learned to live long. Humans also live longer than animals of comparable size, which means that if we wait maybe for, I don't know, maybe 1,000 years, probably we could also be uh, very uh, long-lived species. But for most of us, this is too long. So the goal of uh, modern medicine or modern biotechnology is to implement such a scenario to teach humans age in the same way as this naked mole. And I need to say that this is difficult because aging is a tough problem. The table after me actually shows that in the last two or three years, more than 10 clinical trials of uh, medicines against Alzheimer disease failed, all failed, because it's incredibly difficult to make a therapy which would help or cure age-related diseases. In the last 30 years, there were possibly more than $100 billion spent in cancer research, and we still don't have cure of cancer. So what we believe, and this is one of uh, Moscovian activists, uh, Maria Konovalenka, what we believe is that we attack aging rather than specific age-related diseases, we can eliminate or possibly postpone aging and develop lots of useful medicines against all kinds of age-related diseases. So in fact, this kind of medicines will be effective. They will be effective against multiple diseases. They will be safe because they extend life. And what's more important, all these medicines will extend human abilities. In order to do so, I mean, this, is not, this has not been yet done. So in order to do so, we need to implement an incredibly multidisciplinary research. So actually, everything modern science and technology has has to be blended in in order to produce these kind of therapies. So for example, in order to establish relations between genes, uh, their targets, their signal molecules, whichever, in order to develop such therapies, you have to read lots of literature. But the genome is large and the literature is large. No human possibly can read this amount of papers, which mo most probably means that we have to Google or we have to implement text, uh, um, text mining, natural language processing, everything in order to digest this literature and provide hypotheses. We have to analyze the relation between the genes and to find the genes which are important for, uh, for aging. And we have uh, quite a number of people now who are doing that. Once the genes are established, we need lots of molecular modeling. So what I'm telling you about is that without computers, this problem has, could never been solved. So we used a lot of, we used lots of computer power and a lot of computing in order to establish, to find small molecules which can modulate actions of specific genes. 
And once this is done, this is just one example, there are lots of them, you can potentially find medicines which, if tried in model animals, extend their lifespans. And this is the graph which we have extracted from our recent crowd age initiative, which is just an attempt to blend investors and biologists and mathematicians and computer scientists and programmers, whichever, to find such drugs. And you can see that this guy, this compound, actually extends life of, uh, of yeast. So I'm finishing here. I'd like just to tell you that this is a subject which most of the people don't think much about. Everyone thinks that aging can, cannot be uh, cured. Just imagine the world where this thing is finished, no aging. Then, of course, everyone will have to endure lots of changes. So, for example, uh, biotechs will have to develop different drugs. Regulators will have to make aging uh, an indication, because nowadays you cannot test a drug against aging. You have to test a drug against diabetes or something like that. Well, society has to agree that there is no such thing like healthy aging. Doctors have to move into preventive medicine and have to monitor health of people, uh, monitor biomarkers and biological signals of uh, people 24 hours a day in order to intervene at the right time. Governments have to implement reforms because uh, just imagine what happens to pension systems if uh, people start to uh, live longer. And what's more important is that people have to rework their attitudes to life and most probably don't think about it it has just been fun. Prepare to work indefinitely. And I want to finish here with a more positive statement that, once again, this is a very awesome perspective because anti-aging drugs will, in fact, not change our world like everyone in Skolko wants, but uh, to change worlds because we will increase our lifespan. We will let all the people feedback into the innovation loop with their experience to drive uh, the innovation. And most importantly, we will extend human abilities. Probably humans will, uh, will possibly withstand higher doses of radiation, chemical exposure, whatever, and only these kind of humans, the transformed human beings, will possibly live in space. And this is terraformed Mars for those who didn't get it. So welcome to the new world. Thank you.